Hey, what's up guys? It's Ozzy here. I just watched Spider-Man Homecoming last night, and I've got to say I enjoyed this movie a lot. Literally, as soon as this movie started, the very first scene I was already happy with, the way they treated the first scene introducing the character of Michael Keaton's Vulture, that's how the movie started off and it was really awesome. It was eight years in the past and it kind of showed the aftermath of the Avengers movie. Then it fast forwards eight years later to Tom Holland and what he's doing. And I was literally smiling the whole time. I just loved the very beginning of the movie. The first five minutes was absolutely awesome. So in Spider-Man Homecoming, he is actually a high school student. So in the last two Spider-Man franchises, so the uh, regular Sam Raimi Spider-Man and then the Amazing Spider-Man with Tom, or uh, not Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, they, those guys were like 25 and they were trying to pretend to be high school students and it didn't really work for me. I still like them, it just didn't feel as real. Tom Holland definitely feels like a high school student. He almost looks like the same size as my brother and he's in grade 10, which is basically what he's supposed to be in the movie, which was awesome. So he's got crushes, he's got homework, he's got the decathlon, and it's just perfect. It, the whole setting is just good. He's got the girls that he likes, he's got his nerdy friends. It's just the perfect, perfect setting for a Spider-Man movie. There's also no origin story, which I really like. It's a really fresh take, just because the last two franchises of Spider-Man, we've gotten the whole origin. So like he's normal at the beginning, gets the spider bite, then he has the powers. In this movie, it moves a lot faster just because he already has the powers. So no, that means Uncle Ben will not die for the third time. That poor guy dies so many times and it's finally not going to happen in this movie, which I'm sure a lot of you guys will like. Instead of the origin, it's actually more of a homecoming story. I know that sounds a little cliche, but it is. He's finally in the MCU, so he's coming home. There's the homecoming dance, and then there's also a homecoming as in, I don't know, like eventually becoming an Avenger. I kind of think of it that way. Right now, he's almost like a street level hero, just like the Defenders. Obviously, he's a little more powerful than most of them, but he's trying to basically get a promotion from his street level friendly neighborhood Spider-Man to the Avengers version of a Spider-Man. And I really like that aspect of the story because he's really trying to prove himself to Tony Stark to bring him on to the Avengers the whole movie. So let's talk about some characters. So Tom Holland, absolutely amazing. This is the perfect, perfect Spider-Man. There's literally no real changes I could really make to his character. It was just awesome. Every scene with him, even the Peter Parker scenes was just really really good like I know in the past Spider-Man movies there were some scenes where him as Peter Parker like he didn't really care as much but when he's Peter Parker in the movie it's actually entertaining which is really hard to do and his Spider-Man is even more entertaining. Michael Keaton as the Vulture now I knew he was gonna bring something really good to the table but man he killed it beyond my expectations and the Vulture was a great villain I know in the MCU, there's not really that many good villains. Like, I know there's Loki, and, uh... The fact that I have to think about a second one kind of shows that there's not really any great ones. The Winter Soldier was pretty good as well, but I guess he doesn't really count as a huge villain, but... I really liked him as a villain in uh, Captain America The Winter Soldier, but the Vulture is right up there. He was really, really good. The motivation was good. I really liked what they did with the costume. I'm, The comic book version of the costume just looks ridiculous in my opinion. That's why I've never really liked the Vulture, but giving him like space tech and making him have like a military jacket on and the helmet looks really creepy at night with the green eyes. It was awesome. I love that suit so much. And Michael Keaton really brought that menacing character that we need for a villain. And I love pretty much every scene with him. And there's a really big surprise kind of scene with him and Peter. And you guys will love that scene. When you see the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. Another character that really surprised me in this movie was the character of Ned, which is Peter's best friend. And he was really funny in the movie and... He was just a great, lovable character. I didn't think I was going to like him too much. And if you guys are hardcore Spider-Man fans from the comics and you want everything to look like the comics, 
you might get a little upset by the movie, but just because of how good the movie is, I don't think you would care that much. Like, Ned in the comics is actually supposed to be the Hobgoblin, and I don't see them doing that at all. This movie was also really, really funny. I was not expecting it to be that funny. I knew it was going to be kind of funny just because, like, it's a high school movie, it's Spider-Man, Spider-Man's known for making jokes, but there was a lot of comedy in this movie, and half of it wasn't even from Spider-Man, so most of the scenes I was laughing at wasn't even Peter Parker slash Spider-Man, which is awesome because that makes me like other characters even more. Some of the comedy was actually really raunchy and I'm really surprised they got away with some of it. Like, there's one scene where one of the characters says they're watching porn. And this is a movie that pretty much anyone's supposed to see. Like, my little brother that's 11 and other younger kids are going to be seeing this and they're going to be asking their parents like, Mommy, what's porn? So yeah, if you're bringing your son or daughter or nephew, whatever, be prepared for that question after the movie. The action scenes in this movie were awesome. The scenes where Spider-Man is in the air with Vulture were really, really cool. All of the new web combos that Spider-Man has, just because Tony Stark made a suit and he went freaking overboard with all the web combos. I think they said there's like something like 526 web combinations, which is crazy because that means they really have endless possibilities with the stuff Spider-Man can do in all the other movies he's going to be in. And just the ones that they kind of showed in this movie were really, really cool. Something you guys might be a little worried about in this movie is that there might be too much Iron Man. I can see where you're coming from just because this is the first MCU Spider-Man and they want to get the marketing up by using Iron Man, which everyone loves. And you might think that Iron Man's going to be in it a lot just based off of the posters and the trailers and so on. But it's actually not the case. He's barely in the movie. I think he's only in the movie for maybe three or four scenes and they're only like a few minutes. So it's not like he's overpowering Spider-Man in this movie at all. He's actually just there every once in a while which is perfect because it's not too much Iron Man it's not too little it's just the right amount and since this is an MCU movie you know there's going to be end credit scenes there's actually two so there's a mid credit scene which kind of well it does kind of help the plotting for the next movie I think and then there's a last one and honestly if you're not a fan of kind of things that don't really matter I guess I would probably leave it's nothing too crazy like it has nothing to do with any of the future movies it's just there for kind of comedy purposes so if you guys want to wait like the whole five minutes for the credits to be done go ahead it was pretty funny but if you have somewhere to go I wouldn't stay the whole time and just one complaint before I give the movie its final rating. So whenever I go to Cineplex to watch a movie that's a really big movie, like they show it in IMAX and 3D and all, they actually give out posters. So they tweeted about giving out Spider-Man Homecoming posters for the movie, and they didn't even give me one. So that was a little disappointing. My hype for the night after the movie was like this. It kind of went down a little bit just because of the poster. But... That's really not that bad considering the movie was absolutely awesome and that didn't affect my day at all. The only thing that was negative about the entire night was not getting a free poster. So without further ado, I'm going to give Spider-Man Homecoming, the very first MCU Spider-Man movie, an A. I loved this movie from start to finish. The characters were lovable, the action scenes were memorable. Everything about this movie was so fun and it was really refreshing. It gave a really good take on Spider-Man and especially based off of the comics. So thanks for watching my movie review guys. If you guys want to see more videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. And one more thing, I'm going to leave you guys with a question. What is your favorite Spider-Man movie of all time? Mine is probably Spider-Man 2, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man, obviously, and Spider-Man Homecoming. It's literally dead even right now. I probably need to watch uh, both of them a couple more times to really make my decision. I think Spider-Man Homecoming might have a slight edge on it just because I love that movie. But uh, yeah, leave a comment below of what your favorite Spider-Man movie is, and I'll see you guys next time.